Okay, so we've got our lighting set up. Now all we need to do is assign some materials and see what hap what happens to the to the image the scene when the new materials are added. So we'll do this in the materials editor. Okay, and let's stick it to this side, and I'm going to put this view back to realistic. And also going to try and see what happens if I ask the lighting and shadows to be illuminated with the scene lights. Okay. It kind of looks okay like that. Might be a bit tricky to pick things, but we'll see in a moment. Okay, I'm going to change the filter back from lights to all because I want to pick bits of geometry. Right, so these are the two materials that are used in the scene. You can see that none of the other materials have these little tags in the corner. They're not active materials. So let's hijack this one. Okay, this is going to become our floor. So we'll change, we'll, instead of using these arch and design ones, which are good, but they don't have the, the realism that some of the other materials have in the software. So instead of arch and design, if you click there, and what I'm going to do is go to the Autodesk material library, to the flooring slot. I want a wooden floor. And I'm going to use something fairly strong here. Um, this beechwood honey was a nice rich color. So I'll double click that one. Okay, and I can rename this. So let's call it wooden floor. I'll use capital letters like the rest, just for consistency. I'll activate the ambient occlusion so I get the good shadows. And then I want to pick the wooden floor from the scene. So if I hover here, you can see it's showing me that, that the timber floor is right under my cursor. Just click once, and I've got the timber floor under my control. Okay, assign the material. Okay, and then this is flashing, this is annoying me, so I'm going to change it back from realistic to shaded. That's better. Okay, and we then need to say how much, how often, the picture of the wooden floor that's in here is repeated on the model. And we do that in the modify panel, and you drop the list down, and you choose UVW map. Now this is just off the page, this is just out of view, this is a bit annoying. Okay, what I'll do is I'll move this up slightly, and do that again, so you can see where it is. So modify, and then it's done it again. It's that's a nice. It's a pest. Okay. It the command is called UVW map, and I can't get it to show on screen. Okay. Don't get it mixed up with some of the others. It's UVW map. Okay. I can't get it to show on screen. Okay. And it's first thing you have to decide is is it going to be uh, what kind of object is it that you're placing the UVW mapping onto? Is it a flat object? Is it a boxy one? Spherical? Cylindrical? Whatever. Uh, I'm just going to go with box for this one. And I'm going to use real world map sizes. Because this is material with an Autodesk one that's set up to be you know, real world size. So it should behave itself. Now I can't see the material in the scene. It would be good if I could. So click this icon and we should see the wood floor appear. Okay, if you wanted the wooden floor to run a different direction, what you do is you activate this slot, click it once, okay, and then use the rotate button. I've got the angle snap on here, so it goes in five degree increments, and I look for this the 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 hemispherical circle, okay, and you see it when I rotate, uh, keeping my eye on this slot here. So I'll just take that back, but keep your eye on this slot here, because that's showing you how many degrees you're rotating it by. Okay, so the floor is running a different direction now. Click UVW map again to lock it, and then we'll see what impact that has on the on the rendering. So instantly a heck of a lot of an impact. The, the global illumination is picking up the color of the, the wooden floor and it's scattering it around the room. It's bouncing the brown 
around the room making it a much warmer feeling. It's nowhere near as cold a feeling as it was before. Okay, we'll not wait for it to render the whole thing. I'll just uh, let it do a bit of the floor so you can see how uh, shiny and kind of realistic that looks. Okay, it's got a nice hazy varnish on it, a nice kind of soft finish, and it's nice and realistic. Okay, now we can't see these thin lines very well because we've got a low precision setting for the for the render. Okay, that's the image precision is set to pretty low. So I'm going to increase that, and next time we render, you would see these wires much better, and you'd see the gap between the door clearer as well. Okay, so let's add another material to the scene. Okay, and this one is going to be some concrete for the walls. So arch and design, sorry, we click the arch and design so we can get back to the uh, library. I've got concrete there. Okay, we've got all sorts of materials we can choose here. There actually seems to be more concrete here than there is in uh, the 2013 version. Um, so I'm going to go for formwork holes. Okay. If I change the material preview, you can double click it and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's not easy to see what's happening there. It kind of shows it a bit too repetitive. So we've got our material. So we want the ambient occlusion on and we'll give it a name. So this is uh, concrete walls. And if I click around about here, I should get control of the concrete walls. And I can assign the material. I then do the UVW mapping process. So remember this is out of view, unfortunately. Don't think you can see it. Okay, and we want it to be box mapped and use real world map sizes. Okay, I'm going to assign another material just now before I hit render. Well, actually what, what I'm going to do is, is show you how you can assign the mapping from one object to another. So the concrete at first floor will be the same as the concrete at ground floor. So we'll, uh, we'll select an object, so we select the concrete at ground floor, assign the material, then go for the UVW map, But instead of setting anything, we can acquire the mapping. So we click on acquire, and then I can click on this object, or press the letter H and choose the material from the list. So if I grab the mapping from the first floor concrete, pick, it says, how do you want to do it? Relative to each other or independent of each other? Safer to usually go for absolute. And OK, and that's a quick way of assigning mapping between objects. OK, and the final material I want to add in this view is on these uh, large doors. So we'll use a slightly different wood here. So we'll go to Arch and Design. Well, instead of concrete, we'll use wood. And I'm going to use cherry... cherry stained light low gloss cherry stained light low gloss what a mouthful okay I've got my material let's enable the ambient occlusion again and let's rename this to doors and then pick the objects from the scene so there's a, there's a bit too many to pick there's thin edges and there's frames and things so I'm going to use the oops now see, that, see what happened there I typed a H and it went into the name so what I'll do is I'll get away from that by just clicking off there, then press H, and I'm looking for everything that has the DR in it. So I've got them here, 3D, DR, and all these are 3D, DR, so the door edges, door frames, and door leaves. I'll click OK. OK, I can assign the material. I want to UVW map it, as before. We'll use box mapping, and we'll use real world mapping, and that basically is the you know the, all the 
all the work you need to do. So we'll just close the materials editor and I'm just going to show you how you set up the render so it saves the file and is usable. So if you go to render setup and what we'll do is we'll choose a uh, choose a larger size render. I'm going to go for 1200 by 600. Okay, I want it to save the file this time. I'm going to ask it to choose a TIFF file and I'll save it to my desktop and save. I need to give it a name, so let's, let's call this camera one and save. I can store some alpha channel information which is useful for a Photoshop use. Okay, and then I've chosen a proportion here that's 1200 by 600. Okay, this view isn't actually that proportion. So I want what I can do here is change, is click on the camera 01, and then make it show safe frames. And this matches proportion here to what you see in the viewport. So then you can make any little minor tweaks you want. So I'm not really getting a balanced view there. I could do with my camera being a bit lower down. So if I get move and click on the camera, and if I move it down a wee bit, that gives me a, a bit more of a balanced view. And we're ready to render now. So we'll hit render and I'll shut up and just record once the thing has done its finished render. Okay, I'm going to stop the audio but carry on uh, and then pause the video once the thing is recording. Okay, so it's firing away now. I'll just stop the audio. Okay, that's the rendering finished. You can see down here it's telling me the rendering time of just five minutes, which isn't bad. It's a 1200 by 600 image, reasonable final gather precision, anti aliasing's cranked up a wee bit. And if I zoom in, you can see. You know just how kind of elegant this is looking and uh, you know nice crisp realistic looking shadows and uh, this is you know a big part of this the quality here is due to the anti-aliasing setting that these line thin lines look nice and sharp okay and that's basically all you need to do you just swap materials in and out and test the way this looks